Welcome to Kippy C Math! Today we're going to compare numbers and Bruno has brought some of his friends to help us because you see dogs come in all sorts of sizes just like numbers. We use these symbols to stand in for words because mathematicians are always looking for smart cuts, ways to make their work faster that are still super smart. We can remember this symbol means less than because if we take our left hand like this, it's going to make a L, an L looking shape like that. L for less, l -l less. Then the other side is the greater than sign. Other people sometimes think of it as going from smaller, like a small little hole, get to a big one. Maybe that's helpful for you. The point is that we read it across this direction from left to right, less than, like, you know, one is less than eight. If we use this symbol, we read it across this way, eight is greater than one. So we could fill in the blank with these puppies, right? First, we're gonna think of what words we wanna use in these blanks. The size of the puppy is hmm, the size of the dog. Go ahead and choose which words you want to go into the blank. Right, the puppy size is less than the doggy size. Once we know the words, then we can choose the symbol. Remember, less starts with an L, so we put in the symbol that looks like a kind of sideways crooked L, less than. Here are Bruno's friends, and we can fill in the blank again. The size of the big dog is greater than the size of the little dog. So now we use the other symbol going the other way. This symbol means greater than. So now let's talk about it with numbers, thinking about money. We have Bruno over here, and we have Fluffy McFlufferson over here. Who do you think has more money, just based on the green rectangles? Probably think that Fluffy McFlufferson has more money, because here we see one, two bills, and here we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bills. But if I were to tell you the value of those bills was not the same, that Bruno's bills were tens, and Fluffy McFlufferson's were ones, now our opinion changes about who has more money. Because Bruno actually has 10, 20 dollars, and Fluffy McFlufferson has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars. It's not just about the number of dollars, like back here. It's also about the value of the dollars, how much the dollars were worth, whether or not the dollars were $10 bills or $1 bills. In other words, the value matters when we compare. So let's get back to numbers. If I'm looking at this number, I can't just go ahead and start picking out random digits. Ooh, this one has a lot of nines, so it must be big. Because we know that these digits have value secret hidden value just like those dollar bills. We'd have to model it out, right? Four hundreds, one ten, three ones. And then on the other side, two hundreds, nine tens, and nine ones. We can look and see that even though this number has so many tens and ones, it's not bigger because the hundreds here are so, so, so much bigger. In fact, this would only need to have just one extra 100 to be bigger. So we would say 413 is greater than 299, and we would put in this symbol, the greater than symbol. Now we're not gonna draw the model every single time. Let's figure out what work we should show with our special guest. Hey! Hi, how are you? I'm great. Tell us who you are. <laughs> I'm Miss Pennyman. I work at Lead Academy, Hey Lead Academy, and I'm here to help you guys with some math. Thank you so much. We're wondering, how do you compare the numbers 347 and um, 361? How should we compare those numbers? Comparing numbers. Okay, let's see. 
first, you should always start with your place value chart. Okay. Once you've got your place value chart, you want to stack your numbers in your place value chart. So I would put 347 in my place value chart. I would put 361 in my place value chart. Got it. Next, I'm going to look at the biggest place value. So here, my biggest value is my hundreds. I'm going to look all the way over at my hundreds. And I see I've got three hundreds and I've got another three hundreds. And so since those are the same, those aren't going to help me too much. So I'm going to go to my next biggest place value. And that would be my tens. And if I'm looking at my tens, I see I have four tens and I have six tens. And I know that six tens is greater than four tens. So... 361 must be greater than 347. Awesome. So then, Miss Pennyman, now I want to fill in my blank. 347 is blank than 361. How should I fill that in? Got it. So I know that 347 is less than 361, but those symbols can get kind of tricky. So I'm going to remember that I use my left hand for my less than symbol. And if I remember it like that, I should have the right symbol for 341 is, sorry, 347 is less than 361. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad I could help. Yeah. Now, sometimes we're going to be asked to see questions like this, where we have to drag the numbers in the blanks to make a true comparison. The first thing I do is I look at my symbol and I figure out what it means. It looks like the left hand L, so I know that this means less than. So now I want this number to be less than this number. This number is going to be the small number, and this number is going to be the big number because small is less than the big. So now I do the same exact work I did before. I dra draw my place value chart, put the numbers on the chart, and look in the biggest place first. This number has more hundreds, so it's bigger. So this is my small number. Now I can drag it over. 312 is less than 401. If my symbol had been this way, greater than, I would have dragged the numbers to a different spot. Yay for your super brain! Yours is this great big one over here, which is greater than this small little brain. Although the truth is, it's not really the size of your brain that determines how successful you're going to be. It's really how hard you work. And you are working so hard, Kipsters. We are so proud of you.